Hey there, Wondering Watchers. Welcome to this Pick a Card Tarot reading, which reveals how a certain someone sees their future with you and how you'll ultimately impact their life. This reading unveils snapshots of the future that your person envisions with you by their side and explores the various ways that you will have a profound effect on them and their future. Keep in mind that you, as well as your certain someone, have agency over your lives and make the decisions about how to experience it. These cards only provide perspective and it's your respective choices and actions that lead to the ultimate truth of your situation. For those of you ready to dive into their future with you, the link to each reading is in the description box below. In front of me, I have four piles of cards. Pile number one, Mermaid Tarot. Pile number two, Spellcaster's Tarot. Pile number three, The Land of Stories Tarot. And pile number four, Tarot of Dreams. Pick the pile of cards that you feel drawn to the most for this reading. If you feel drawn to more than one pile, there may be messages among the different readings that are meant for you. Trust your intuition to lead you to the right messages. If you need more time to review your deck choices, feel free to pause this video. Once you've made your decision, go to the description box and click the link for the corresponding pile. Now it's time to tap into the cards, choose your effect on their future tarot adventure, and let's make magic happen. Welcome back. This is a reading for group number one, those who picked mermaid tarot to reveal how the person on your mind envisions their future with you and the impact that you will have on their life. So I'm gonna go ahead and pick out some cards here. First off to find out what it is that the person on your mind envisions about your future together. We have here the Six of Swords. The Three of Swords. The Four of Swords. The Tower. And the High Priestess. So group number one with this, all these swords over here and the tower indicates that the person on your mind envisions their future with you as having a lot of uh, problems, obstacles, um, issues that they're going to have to figure out how to deal with, uh, some that have to do with you in their life and others that have to deal with with the, maybe even the pain that you bring in from your own life um with the six of swords here they see that basically the, your future together is going to um be trying to like move things forward uh trying to deal with obstacles and restrictions the best way they know how and really trying to get to uh like a good momentum and dealing with the ups and downs like the obstacles of um that life brings and again possibly even um pains from their past and or pains from your past the four of swords here it seems like with you they see that there is definitely going to be uh, a time where they need to kind of withdraw and um find a, a sense of like clarity and that here 
they do see something ending. They do see being with you. There is some aspect about what they had hoped for, what they had been brought up to believe, some aspect of their their sense of what they thought would provide them security or what they thought they wanted is going to have to um, kind of give way. And with the high priestess, they understand that the future with you or they see the future with you is coming to bring like, I'm not, I'm not saying like surprises in a, uh, in a way where they're like looking forward to it. It's almost as if they see your future together is going to put them in a situation where they really are going to have to um, deal with the realities that they may have wanted not to deal with or confront, uh, secrets that they've kept. Uh, possibly even dealing with secrets that um, you've kept, maybe intentionally, maybe not intentionally. But here it seems like they are more envisioning um, the future with you having to like, like almost like mentally prepare themselves to be broken down. Um, or some aspect of their life to be broken down. Um, maybe even concepts of um, strength or maybe concepts of their ego. Um, maybe how they envisioned kind of um, almost like a sense of security that they thought that they had by keeping things to themselves. And it's almost as if they envision, this future that they envision is, um, it's almost like breaking down their walls and, have it, and revealing things about themselves that maybe they don't wanna confront or share necessarily quite yet. So here we have the peacock, vanity, and pride. So it's almost as if um, being with you, it's almost as if you are bringing to the surface those aspects of their ego, like with this tower, the things that they maybe have, um, I'm not saying that they like are liars or they uh, make up stuff, but the things that they embellish or try to highlight about themselves that so that people don't see certain aspects, other aspects of themselves. It's as if you being with you um, kind of makes them recognize that for they've been putting on a show or they do tend to put on a show and possibly even um, for themselves, something that they kind of need distraction from themselves. We have here the alligator silence and introspection. So I would say the four of swords and the high priestess, those definitely are cards of silence and introspection. Um, and I think it's interesting with this alligator aspect. Um, it's almost the time that your person um, would withdraw. It's they're m the most vulnerable and they're most uh, um, defensive even. So I feel like, like with being with you, their future with you, um, if they're seeing that they need to kind of like withdraw and deal with some pain and so forth, it um, it's as if they see that they maybe need to take some time away from you uh, or the world in general um, to kind of like deal with their own, what's going on in their own head. Um, and that's when they, it's almost like protecting their emotions, protecting the aspects of themselves that are like 
they keep hidden, um, it makes them really want to put on a show of being tougher than they actually are. Um, and here we have this nest of wasp teamwork in order. So ultimately group number one, being with you, your person is going to get support that they may not have asked for, may not have felt that they wanted, may maybe felt too much pride to ask for that type of help. Um, and like ultimately helping them to kind of see things from a different perspective maybe a perspective they didn't want others being aware of, um, wanting to keep a little bit hidden. We have this hippopotamus, the master of emotions. So group number one, basically being with you are, may bring up a lot of issues, uh, emotional issues that they really haven't wanted to deal with and needing to kind of find a way to deal with that in a healthy a healthy way. Um, it may be that they need more time. Uh, and it seems like, you know, with you, they, the future they envision with you, it's almost as if um, you will ultimately understand what they're going through, you might to them be seen as a trigger or a cause for some of these things, but ultimately how you, how you affect them is by having them be held responsible for their emotions, but, uh, and, and how they think about things, but also be, uh, nurturing and accepting and understanding and kind of patient in, in them going through that process. So um, it's not necessarily saying like you're gonna just deal with like being a push pushover. I think you're, you're gonna understand they're going through uh, major transitions um, or I, I think they are, I would say slightly afraid of kind of showing them their true self to you um, and kind of recognizing that part of how they have been is kind of like, like I said, a show um, because to hide the more vulnerable aspects of themselves. So here we have crow healing in the dark. So another card to indicate that really um, being with you is going to bring up issues of um, that they need to heal, um, aspects of their shadow self, aspects that um, they may not have wanted to show other people. And here we have elephant learning from the past. So bringing up issues from the past. Um, basically having them like confront some aspects maybe they haven't dealt with in the past have learned haven't learned to like face and to heal we have this dig deep card so basically it's there seems to be a, a very clear running theme with your person group number one we have this twin flames so here if there is some kind of like tower moment and this could be uh you know um something that happens frequently you know things that like um they kind of have things going on internally and then something kind of just like like a a switch is flipped where things just kind of they can't handle um things to a certain degree it's it, i don't see cards that indicate that uh they are going to be um like lashing out or anything but i feel like part of the 
way that you'll affect them has to do with the things that they see in you that um, they that might remind them of aspects of themselves that maybe they don't necessarily want to bring to to the light. Um, there's going to be aspects of of you that like brings them out of their shell that helps them kind of finds their own strength but then there's going to be aspects of you that kind of remind them why in the first place they kind of closed off or kind of felt that the way to solve their problems and whatever problems that might be something from the past was to kind of do it on their own or to kind of like keep things to themselves packed away and we have this weight card so and these puzzle pieces i feel like that's definitely um being with you is going to help them put together um puzzle pieces from their past and that ultimately that sense of patience and you really helping them figuring out how things kind of fit together for them um so we also have this inner child card. So group number one, I feel like uh, basically your person sees the way they see the future. Um, they might not recognize it, but it does have to do somewhat with this uh, concept of the, the inner child, things that maybe that they felt they needed to protect in a certain way. What's interesting with the six of swords is traditionally um, the Six of Swords, there is um, like a parent figure and a child figure in a boat with a ferryman kind of uh, taking them across to uh, a new location. And ultimately, the most vulnerable person in that scenario is, is the child. So here, this concept of the inner child and kind of starting this whole thing um, Ultimately, I think your person is um, is concerned about their inner child and kind of how how that inner child needed to be protected at some point, and possibly seeing that there's a different way to address the concerns uh, of the past and different ways to kind of. Um, deal with problems that may uh, bring up issues of, you know, things that they didn't really want to deal with at the time. We have this card of fury, actually. So um, it may be that it may be there are times where your person is going to um, not really know how to deal with anger um, I had said before, like, I don't see them necessarily lashing out. Um, there might be, like I said, aspects of you that, um, you know, we're drawn, we're drawn to uh, things that we find similar, but also there are things about people like that, uh, that we don't like in others that is truly just a reflection of the things we don't like in ourselves. So it it does seem like there are going to be times where this process is going to, um, you may even have to help your, your person kind of um, figure out how to deal with their anger in a way that is uh, constructive because even the emotion of anger is something that it, it's a valid emotion, but how, how to kind of handle it is something that you may need to help them. Um, not like you have to be their, you know, anger management person, but maybe even kind of help them recognize when um, they're starting to get to a po point of like annoyance about things uh, like, for example, when my husband, I can tell he's getting hangry, he's hungry, and he's getting um, to the point where he needs to just eat. I can kind of tell when he's like, "Oh no, I'm not hungry. I'll just pass. Well, I'll just wait. I'll just say no. You're gonna get you're gonna get hangry. Have a snack." 
So I feel like you are going to help them kind of gauge their own um, internal kind of uh, thermometer and like let them know, like almost get in touch, like have them, like the emotions that they've been trying to like hide or deal with or um, kind of bury deep inside, it's almost as if you are going to have to, not have to, you don't have to do any of this, um, but the future they envision with you and your impact on their life, it's as if you help them to learn to trust their emotions as, as uh, in a positive way. And here we have this map card. So really helping them to kind of, you help them get an understanding of um, their past, their present, the emotions that they had in the past, what they have now, and how to kind of, again, put those pieces together so that they can get a better sense of themselves so that they can actually move things forward. This tower situation is not something to be, um, they, it's usually in hindsight something that is necessary. So um, what they envision about their future I think they envision some aspect of, again, that sense of what they um, kind of built up as that facade or the safety. They see that as, um, you know, needing to come down, um, but ultimately helping them kind of start from a solid base to build up again, it starts with their internal, uh, their sense of their emotions, their inner child. So here we have this flexibility card. Um, so group number one, basically you help your person to not necessarily have, uh, to kind of take down those rigid walls, the ways that they operated, the way that they had to kind of show themselves to the world and kind of get back to figuring out who they are and accepting and owning their emotions and being more, being more flexible. It's almost as if this is the type of person that really doesn't know how to handle it doesn't enjoy hearing no or like really avoid situations where they're going to be disappointed or hurt. And so it's almost as if you you were going to help them to readjust their standards of what is hurtful and what they can accept and the challenges that they can face and how. We have this purity card. So it is like a sense of like rebirth for them. Um, you're going to help them kind of, again, that, that baseline of starting from, uh, from emotions that are wanting to learn, wanting to explore, as opposed to just trying to protect itself. And we have this diligence card. So group number one, I feel like being with your person and bringing up all these issues of their past and trying to fit these puzzle pieces together, um, you're really going to help them come to see that focus and intention on like things that are practical, the things that like... Um, that are going to be more like functional and moving them forward for the future as opposed to protecting some aspects of the past and trying to like find ways to like either pretend they don't exist or to ignore those like aspects of the past you're going to teach them like how to kind of uh, 
approach problems in different ways to see them from a higher perspective as opposed to kind of feeling like in the the muck of things and kind of um like this concept of like self-protection we have this cancer card this immense card so this is definitely a card of uh high priestess and um, emotions it's basically um, cancer has to do with um, kind of protecting yourself uh, with the the crab as the um, symbol for the sign of cancer uh, with the ruling planet being the moon it's a sense of the crab has this hard shell that they constantly carry around and protect themselves because they have like a soft interior um, that they're trying to protect and ultimately being with you you're going to like help nurture the aspects of their emotions uh, so that they're they're able to kind of move forward move freely so they're not just hiding and stuck you have this uh, descendant invitation card so group number one uh, with you your person will start to kind of um, be able to open themselves to more experiences more people um, they'll be able to kind of allow more people into their life and to affect them um, almost like a less protected version of themselves. And here we have this opposition confrontation. So basically that concept of there's going to be situations of discomfort for your person in this future with you, but ultimately you're going to help them confront their own issues to conf to deal with confronting the things they maybe have not wanted to confront the things that again that they may have put on a show like pretend things don't bother them um and it's it's not necessarily going to be comfortable or easy but it's almost as if Again, you are that person that has that patience and isn't necessarily going to be judgmental of what's going on other than knowing that your person has a lot of work to do on themselves and that you're wanting to kind of help them get through that so that they can kind of figure out their future you got this card of love so really this uh their future with you they're going to be a like truly affected by this loving caring side of you um a, a, a side that is accepting a side that like helps to heal whatever it is that they have tried to not deal with we have this passion card so i feel like your person they may have dealt or been dealing with things that they've tried to kind of bury and hide that once they kind of get to this kind of understanding how to deal with emotions and this sense of knowing what it is to like almost have unconditional love they'll be able to kind of um, build upon that and start yearning for things being motivated and passion and passionate about life uh, their future um, and you're a big part of that and we have here this spirit guide so group number one um with you your person is really going to it, there's no way of other other way of saying it you're basically going to guide their spirit you're going to help them to um 
break free of some aspects of their past and really g- allow them um, to heal and to um, grow from a very beautiful place of like uh, love and acceptance and um, being able to shine shine their inner light that they might not even uh, know exists right now. So I hope this provides a helpful perspective of how your person sees their future with you and how you'll impact their life. We'll see you next time. Take care. Welcome back. This is a reading for group number two, those who pick Spellcaster's Tarot to reveal how the person on your mind envisions their future with you and how you will ultimately impact their lives. Let's get a look at this. It's Seven of Pentacles. So perhaps a sense of uh, long-term investments, but... Let's go ahead and pull out some tarot cards here. See what we get. We have here the moon. Let's take this one. We have seven of cups. So with the moon and seven of cups, a sense of uncertainty and uh, potentially fears, illusions, choices. We have the four of wands. So they envision a sense of celebration and, you know, being with you to celebrate a milestone of um, kind of recognizing that you both are choosing a path forward together and here we have the five of wands so they also envision a sense of like friction annoyances we have here the king of wands so it seems like your person also envisions that um with you being with you they will be able to kind of uh kind of tap into their emotions and their passions to pursue what it is that they want out of life. Um, to some degree, with this moon card here, um, like being with you, they recognize there's a, a sense of um, needing to um, balance the things that they want with the things that you'd want the things that they expli explicitly have told you that they wanted versus the things that they're keeping to themselves or they're still working out and the things that you have explicitly or will explicitly say that you want versus the things that you are still trying to figure out as well. So they do see that the path ahead is with you is going to be one that requires um, taking things slow at times and getting a sense of um, like the lay of the land and trusting um, respectively your own emotions. So, and with the seven of cups here, like recognizing that there's going to be choices that both of you are going to be faced with uh, as a team, as individuals, and um, ultimately having to kind of like almost trust the other person to um, figure out which choices are like true, uh, what's which ones are not just like a fantasy or a waste of time, and kind of like you know, come together and, you know, make sure that the path that you're going on is still the path you want to take together and that there, you know, just going to be times where things are going to, going to annoy them. 
annoy you and kind of like you'll come out uh you know, maybe sometimes those annoyances will turn into cute teasing and other times you'll come out of it exhausted and other, you know, like other times you'll come out of it like, you know, a stronger group. So here we have cowrie shells, passion and feminine power. So group number two, being with you, your person will come to understand that certain things that I would say uh, make you feisty also brings out the feistiness in them uh, with this king of wands um, energy and you both are going to it's like you both are passionate people and that being with you is going to um, help them discover this aspect of the king of wands where like ignites their passion help centers their passions uh, actually move towards their passions you have this psalm book rejoicing and faith so group number two this you know um this moon energy things that they don't really uh see clearly in the seven of cups energy it's it's almost as if being with you you're going to help them again trust themselves more um trust in the connection that you have the two of you have more and that the choices that you are kind of making um the thing the successes that you celebrate um is due to your connection is due to like how you kind of work together um and how you like kind of honor and respect uh each other's like personal drives i guess that's the right word for it personal drives yeah so we have blue moon, second chance, and magic. So here, this may be, um, you've got this moon here and you've got the moon here. I, I get a sense like this feminine power, this rejoicing face. For some of you, there is a, a sense of like um, a, like a, connection with spirituality um maybe when uh, maybe you are more like connected to spiritual and they're trying to like you know they gradually kind of figure that out or become open to that but it's as if like what they see in their future as like uncertainty and conflict um, that might at some point have um, like cause things to be said that shouldn't be said uh, because like it's emotions and passions definitely um, with your person and so there might be like a makeup breakup situation or you guys may have already broken up especially with this moon card um, these two moon cards and second chances so i would say um it's almost as if the second time around is you know definitely better than the first but it's so much more eye-opening um if that is the case but otherwise it's almost a, a sense of uh almost like them being in awe of you and what you can accomplish and them being able to to kind of take on certain things they see in you and kind of improve themselves so we have this soul family card so i feel like i feel like part of this um what it is that you have them kind of deal with is maybe even getting them to be closer to their uh, 
mother figures in their life, their family in their life. Um, it could be that you are close to your family um, and they are kind of picking up from that. Um, and so it's almost like being with you kind of gets them to appreciate the more, uh, maybe the maternal energies or figures in their life, or even gets them to uh, appreciate what it is that um, the m mother figures in their life had done for them. We have this weight card. So ultimately, you know, this sense of the moon and seven of cups and kind of needing patience for that. Um, when you've got this king of wand energy, they are pretty much know what they want uh, based on instinct and they don't necessarily want to wait around for others. I feel like you give them, um, like with you, there's going to be a sense of like understanding that sometimes the things that are truly worth having take patience. And even with this like second chances, um, you know, like maybe giving people second chances, maybe they're the type of person who, um, because they are driven by their emotions or their passions and they kind of feel like they know what they want, they are quick to kind of um, blow off cer certain ideas or uh, certain people, you know, easily. But it's almost as if um, being with you, it's kind of, letting them know like good things come to those who wait and we have this take flight so it's almost as if you are helping them become more like well-rounded in their approach to things so that um they can kind of see the other side of the coin um and still with that knowledge and information still kind of go after what it is they want in life and kind of um yeah definitely be in a position where they're really eager and ready to face certain things in life um even the five of wands like kind of preparing them for conflict pre preparing them to um kind of know what it's like to kind of hear someone say no or to get a, a different point of view and having to deal with that so here we have this badger, I fight for what I want. So again, you know, that, that concept of like uh, this five of wands, like kind of fighting for the things that you want, knowing when to let things go, um, knowing when you kind of have to just wait. Here we have toad purification towards luck. So here I feel like you you are going to help your person come to understand that um, there are certain things that uh, that weigh us down. And there's also times where like our imagination, our creativity really will like, what, like catapult us. Um, into something amazing and really needing to be in the best place um, to take those opportunities on. So um, this concept of like getting rid of the things that aren't really for us so that we know what to fight for, we know what to pursue, but I feel like um, I feel like a card that's not really showing is pretty much, um, I feel like you are going to be a cheerleader for this person. Um, the way they envision it, they're not seeing that you're going to be a cheerleader. That's They see these certain things popping up for their future. But ultimately, the motivation behind it is you being a cheerleader for them. You have butterfly transition into the soul. So here I feel like 
this uh this transition of like it's almost like just fine tuning um there what like what's already there like the beauty is already there uh the potential is already there it's just needing to kind of um kind of shed the skin entirely or kind of do the uh um metamorphosis metamorphosis in a way where they're kind of with you you're going to help them kind of like smooth out the edges like it's you're going to be someone who is helping them to kind of uh change themselves in a, a way that kind of shows their like gets them to their best version of themselves you have this truth card so group number two um this this concept of the moon and the seven of cups and even the five of wands it's as if the things that they're uncertain about and the challenges that they envision with you in the future is going to help them like you're helping them to see what their truth is the things that they don't want to compromise their beliefs that like will help them kind of uh get to this king of wands status we have this card of happiness so group number two basically you really this four wands like you really help your person not only kind of follow their passion but to like enjoy um you know uh victories along the way to enjoy um small successes to enjoy even to a certain degree like the mystery of life and un the unknown and we have this leadership card so group number two you you the king of wands that your person sees in the future is definitely due to you helping them um become that leader um that maybe they already are or um to improve upon or for some you know maybe they're still kind of figuring out but um again that card of like or not that card that idea of being a cheerleader um like you're really helping this person to kind of i i would want to say like the parts of them that they need to improve upon um to definitely improve upon it and kind of even see that there's some aspects of themselves that um like their vulnerabilities that's something that them embracing um will help them to be like a better more passionate uh leader in person we have here the warrior so again it's bringing up the concepts of the five of wands and the king of wands in that uh you know i fight for what i want you really help them to kind of step into that um you know maybe even finding certain causes or to uh with this truth card like to fight for and we have this clarity so again that concept of truth clarity getting a better understanding of themselves you help them with that and this ritual card so group number two it's like being with you they'll they'll come to understand there's certain things uh certain like practices that they they need to incorporate into their life to tap into a you know a piece of calm uh, a sense of like tapping into their imagination or their creativity um and kind of honoring certain like time where uh they are kind of figuring out the best way to move forward i feel like 
this concept of wait and take flight even it's like a sense of um getting them to get more in touch with their uh themselves um it's not necessarily patience but almost like getting them to really you know good things come good things in life come to those who wait who those who have like not just necessarily a plan but kind of um having like a routine so if they're impatient there's a certain routine that they do uh to either calm themselves or get them to like like recognize um it's almost like they need ways to recognize that their time isn't wasted so if there is a waiting period that maybe the, instead they're reading or meditating or um um you know practicing like bre breath work it's a it's something like that is like a, a ritual and practice where they are getting in touch with their um sense of calm their sense of peace getting in touch with their creativity they're more like um um intuition uh and they're not seeing it as wasting time so we have this leo shine card definitely king of wands energy um basically being with you your your person is going to uh learn how to tap into that passion tap into the things that his his or her truth uh the things that they want to fight for um the things that they want to be seen as known for that's really going to um and even a sense of happiness and joy in their life you're really going to help that come to the surface for them we have the sixth house of sustainability so basically like how they kind of deal with their day-to-day -day, um how they can like uh their daily rituals the things that they hold on to the things that they let go um of in order to kind of maintain uh the you know like a passion and drive for what they truly want that is something that you're going to have a huge impact on their life with and you have this retrograde review so group number two this concept of like the moon and the seven of cups um sense of like doubts or illusions and choices uh you're going again you're going to help them to kind of reflect on things reflect on their choices reflect on what their truth is what they want what they want to fight for and um kind of a sense of helping them almost um put more thought put more um not, be more intentional about what it is they want for their future and even yours like and it might not be something that is like they spend hours reflecting upon but it's almost like you will help them recognize there is intention there is um choices that need to be made um and with like clear like just not like uh happenstance or just like um what is the word that I'm thinking of? Um, flimsy decisions on a whim. Like that, it's more like very thoughtful, intentional, um, 
wanting to move forward an idea, a belief, um, a mission statement, a way of life, a way of being. Like, that's the way I see you impacting this person. Again, you have this card of clarity. And it's almost as if, like, you know, you started off with the moon here and seven of cups, which this is like illusions and so forth. But I feel like being with you in their future, like you will help them again, this, be able to reflect on the things that they want, their choices, help them get to a place of um, their true self, their true desire in life, you know, so that the people around them are happy, so that they can be someone who is uh, looked up to, that people actually want to, you know, like have as a role model. Um, and so you're really going to help them see for themselves what it is that they want and how to get there and how to move forward. You have this manifest manifestation card you're really going to help them kind of like manifest their power, their the uh, their higher self, the best version of themselves, and new beginnings. So, group number two, basically, this four of wands, uh, this kind of uh, choosing to take a new path together. I feel like that's going to be a theme uh, for your person and you're a big part of it, helping them see, oh, and you can see all these like these butterflies, this transition into the soul, um, these concept of like new beginnings and almost like a shift in the way that maybe they have kind of thought of things uh, and like taking a second look at at things, having more intention, having more um, kind of like not doing things just to get it done, but to move their life forward in a way that is meaningful and pursuing certain goals uh, that allows them to uh, really, sh you know, shine their inner light and be this kind of like king of of wands, uh, someone who is like charismatic and loyal and passionate and someone who is, uh, takes on risks, calculated risks, uh, for, to, to move forward their, their passions in life and, you know, and it's not just something outside of them. It seems like the passion in life you are a part of that with that four of wands as well and then in your happiness and kind of like i i get a sense that this isn't just their future but uh yours as well like that they that you will be doing this together that you'll be celebrating these things and you'll be uh, kind of a good uh, sparring partner for kind of making sure that the other is sticking to their their truth and pursuing the things in life that they that you both you know feel uh, that fill you with passion it's almost as if you uh are gonna feel like very blessed with this future so group number two i hope this provides a helpful perspective of how your person sees their future with you we'll see you next time take care welcome back this is a reading for group number three those who pick the land of stories tarot to reveal how the person on your mind envisions their future with you and ultimately how you will impact their life so we're going to start off with some tarot cards and find out the future that your person envisions 
we have here the page of swords the magician the lovers the world and the ten of swords interesting okay so here with the page of swords here i feel like your person really envisions your the future together is going to be uh kind of like a lot of new discoveries a lot of uh excitement about you know learning about each other even um and kind of i would say to a certain degree trying to find uh trying to find the right way to kind of express uh themselves and to communicate um on a level that is kind of um like a higher level in the sense of like needing to be more aware of how communications impact each other and like really um recognizing that words matter and it's not necessarily just how you what you say but how you say it as well um with the magician the lovers and the world here it's clear that your person envisions their future with you they're gonna like be on top of the world uh confident they're going to like fulfill their heart's desires in finding love and um like kind of having their you know uh the success in romance uh, that they wanted and almost being able to, like nothing can stop them. In terms of the 10 of swords here, it could be that your person also envisions like um, that being with you, there is in their future, there's gonna be something coming to uh, an end. This could be like a, a problem when it comes to like love, uh, it could be, even they could envision that maybe um maybe some part of their life is going to come to an end some part of them um being signal some part of them um trying i i think it's related to this page of swords some way of kind of like maybe them not thinking they wouldn't get what they want some aspects of some problem some way of thinking about something coming to an end so let's pull some cards here with finding out like the meaning behind like what they envision in terms of how you are going to affect their future so we have the mockingbird prophecies communication so again this um this concept of of communicating finding their voice uh, like maybe even making sure that uh the things that they say or convey aren't the wrong things and this concept of prophecies in this ten of swords it might be like they have like a it's almost like they envision a future so good that they could ruin it like they could mess things up um so i think i think what's going to be key for you is really helping them to in being a good communicator um and to recognize like you know there are going to be uh, problems and there might be disputes and if that comes you know those disputes hopefully will reach an end those problems will be just done and that there'll be like a you know a new day a new uh a new problem to solve along the way 
we have this bottle tree mediation intercession. So I feel like group number three with your person, there might be tendencies to kind of, uh, for them to get lost in their own thoughts uh, or their own emotions and kind of um, their own imagination. So it could be even like this 10 of swords is their own imagination of how bad it could get or how they could mess things up or th how things could get messed up. And to some degree, maybe how amazing all this is the way they see it is part of their imagination. But I feel that um, being with you, they'll come to uh, understand that there is some way to kind of uh have your have their imagination but also kind of fold in the realities of it and that those two don't necessarily have to uh clash they're not mutually exclusive so here we have carry shell passion feminine power so i feel like group number three with you, your person is going to be able to um, enjoy the the passions of love, the passion of creating and confidence and success, um, and also kind of to to recognize that um, there's like to look at the silver lining at things and not necessarily. Uh, anticipate the worst or kind of need to stamp something out in a, one category or, or the other. It's almost like even with this bottle tree, this, um, this sense of like reality and imagination that they can, can coexist. There can be like a, a coexistence of, um, of what you hope for and then the reality of it and kind of what you strive for and like, acceptance of it not being what it what you think it might be or could be um and that be a happy place we have surprises await so with that kind of page of swords energy definitely um it seems like you'll help them kind of uh discover have new discovery uh new adventures um, and kind of share those and unravel them together. We have this dig deep card. So group number three, um, it does seem that with you, um, there is going to be some like digging into their thoughts, into like uh, what it is, um, like examining examining their beliefs uh examining like what is it that they might be i don't want to say afraid of with this ten of swords it's almost as if um they're willing to try everything but that might also you know uh have like not necessarily consequences, but um, might might not have them grounded in in some aspect of reality. It's, I, I get a sense of like um, reality and imagination, uh, kind of not again doesn't have to conflict, but both kind of trying to take s center stage. So there, I, I get a sense that um, being with you, like they're going to kind of. Um, dig deep within themselves to kind of figure out like their beliefs about certain things. We have this start now card. So being with you, uh, you really kind of have them embrace their future. Like this card of the magician. Um, again, that they feel like they are going to be able to accomplish anything. Um, and actually have fun like there there is a sense of playfulness and fun in these these cards 
Um, so it seems like you're going to be a real um, kind of impact on that. And actually, I'm interested in you've got this world card here, and it looks like there's like a bird, like a crow or, or a raven here. Um, so really, I would say this mockingbird communication, um, I think you might have to vocalize some aspects of the silver lining to look at and also like maybe help remind them of actually enjoying their successes, enjoying the surprises. Um, here we have bull consistent perseverance. So I would say to some degree, um, your person really has a lot of like uh, curiosities and um, a, a real drive to like experience something new and like discovering new things. Um, but maybe is there's something on the follow through like completing like again with this ten of swords where there's something that comes up and how they deal with it how they try to solve it how they try to communicate something it's almost as if um they're expecting um something ne something negative if there's it's almost like if there's pushback or if there's something that is uh, difficult, it might kind of be all or nothing. So here I feel like you're going to um, impact their life by letting them know, you know, again, things can coexist and finding a different way to kind of deal with those coexistence of you know whether they're problems or uh, um, trying to make other people happy or kind of how to assert their um, preferences over someone else's preferences like whatever it is it's almost as if uh, you kind of are going to show them um, what it means to kind of almost persevere and kind of pursue something in light of uh, potential problems. And unicorn, otherworldly power. Again, I get a sense of like this kind of horn and this like page of swords, uh, this, this concept of like imagination and um, uh, perception. Like you're going to help them kind of tap into their creativity and use it possibly to their advantage. Maybe there's someone who are, um, you know, they're very creative, like uh, like a writer or someone who is good with, can be good with, uh, with their words or how um, even like slogans, um, but I feel like you're gonna really help them tap into that concept of imagination um, and imagination and uh, reality and use it in, in the way that they can really have a significant like impact uh, in the world, it's like kind of tapping into that magician energy. And we have giraffe broaden the horizons. So you're really going to help them see things from a higher perspective. Um, again, that um, it's almost like you're going to help them grow in a sense of being able to uh, be more clear, to be more analytical, to kind of take into consideration uh, other perspectives and kind of see like, it's not all or nothing. It's, you know, there is a kind of like a, there's excitement every stage of the way, not just at the beginning. So here, let's see what else we have. We have this flow card. So group number three, 
with you, your person is going to kind of, uh, you're going to help them learn to kind of go th with the flow, not necessarily uh, feel like there needs to be a specific, what's it called? Like point in things. Like maybe they're, they are someone who kind of has to know the rules of the game to kind of uh, engage or feel like that they can play to win. It's like, I think you're going to really help them just like, just to be, just to kind of enjoy, uh, even enjoy when there's like something unexpected that it might be seen as a problem. Enjoy what you learn from it. Um, you have here the key. So group number three, this concept of like, the magician, the lovers, the world, like I feel that what they envision may be due to the fact that um, you're going to help them find that the key to their happiness, their success, their confidence, they had it the whole time. Um, and they might attribute it to you, but I feel like you're going to help them, you know, recognize the answers are within them. And then we have abundance. So again, this concept of passion and cowrie shells, this world, lovers, like all this stuff is kind of um, having them recognize even um, like in finding the silver lining, that is like an abundant mindset that's kind of looking at the potential and not like what's what the problem is or uh you know what's not there i feel like you're gonna really help them to you know kind of think more positively and really bring good things into their lives they they're already envisioning that with you they might attribute it to you but ultimately there is the way that they can think about things where you know you you are going to to help them see that they have the the ability to do this all themselves. And it's just a bonus or benefit that they are exploring that with you. We have this card of happiness. So basically you're gonna really help them to enjoy that, enjoy that happiness, enjoy that success in life. We have this opportunity card. So things that, you know, they may uh, be afraid of or think might be problematic, you're going to help them see there might be an opportunity to, um, you know, see things in a different way, opportunity to, um, to find more, more, uh, magic where they might have thought it was just going to be like a dead end. And we have this pleasure card. So group number three, being with you, they will basically have, they'll see like there's a lot of opportunities to enjoy every moment. Like they're going to have a lot of fun with you. They're going to be able to not only, it's not like you're, it's not going to be your responsibility to, um, to have them find fun. They're going to learn to find that in their own life. And uh, again, they might attribute it to you and you're a big part of it, but um, they'll be able to kind of see the potential uh, of everything. Um, you know, they'll st start seeing that silver, silver lining. You have the 12th house of introspection. So this ten of swords here i feel like it is uh the person sees this you know this ten of swords in the future with you it is having to deal with aspects of uh their thoughts of how they see their fears and how they deal with problems or um how they handle unknowns so i feel like you're going to be a big influence on that we have progressions and journey. Again, I feel like this has to do with that flow uh, and you know this, uh, this start now. They might be able to know that there's a start, 
but need to know there's where the finish line is. But with you, you're going to help them to recognize it is a journey. There, it, it's not just uh, things that happen um, on a whim or happenstance. It's an ongoing uh, experience that they can have, you know, be happy with and find joy in. And we have Pisces and this Sensitize. You're really going to have um, impact them on um, being more in touch with their uh, emotions um, and their their feelings. So even those, you've got the swords here. You got the swords here. The magicians that is. Um, ruled by the planet of mercury which has to do with communication like this mockingbird uh and then even the lovers uh that is associated with the sign of gemini which is also an air sign um so it's almost as if there's this idea they have this idea and imagination of what success is for themselves and for love, uh, but you're really going to help them tap into their emotions and their feelings and um, kind of helping them to understand, to enjoy experiences and not just the outcomes or the, the goals that they may have created for them themselves. And then fruit number three, I'm gonna go ahead and pull just three more cards to see how it is that you will affect their future. You have this courage card, so definitely more concepts of passion and um, confronting things that maybe in the past they may not have wanted to confront uh, or give up on. They just like kind of didn't see a point. So here, you're going to help them kind of be able to face this thing, kind of like this bull and the constant perseverance. You have this friendship card. So I feel like through this process, like they see, they envision the future with you, kind of like the success in finding love or, or marriage or like being a couple and being confident and having, you know, like their dream come true. But through this process of being with you, you're going to really help them see that there's more to, again, that end game, that end game of finding love or getting married or be, it's, there's more to life than that. It's just the experiences uh, and your, a true friendship that you have, a true kind of concern and care for each other um, and not, you know, just on, on a daily basis, just on your day to day and not necessarily grand, you know, finales. And again, this happiness card. So this row here is sandwiched in by happiness. So group number three, you're really going to like remind them about, um, you know, how to be happy in the day to day and kind of, it, it seems like there's they are really uh prepared on their own to kind of explore the amazing potential but it's almost as if you are going to be a key to rem to remind them of it there's doesn't need to be an end goal for that potential to be realized it's every step of the way so group number three, I hope this provides a helpful perspective of how your person sees their future together with you. I'll see you next time. Take care. Welcome back. This is a reading for group number four, those who pick tarot of dreams to reveal how a certain someone envisions their future with you and how you will ultimately make an impact on their life. So we're going to start off with these tarot cards to reveal the future that your person envisions with you. So we have here the Eight of Wands. 
Queen of Wands. Seven of Swords. Two of Wands. And Five of Swords. Okay, so here you've got basically Swords and Wands. You've got Fire Energy and you have air energy basically both of those are um kind of active uh masculine energies uh so they the person on your mind kind of envisions uh their future with you having an impact on um how they move forward in life uh and to some degree this you know, this kind of eight of wands uh they basically they see the future with you is going to be one that um they're it's almost like inevitable for them uh that they're going to be moving forward with you that is it is advancing and with this queen of wands here they do envision that you are someone that uh is going to uh demand like being recognized that you are going to uh be a very like forceful person in their life and that they need to respect that and honor that and they also see that you are someone they are um going to be drawn to uh they see that uh there's going to be a lot of attention being given to you um, and to some degree uh, they kind of wonder uh, the attention that they can give you, the attention that other people give you with this seven of swords and the, the five of swords. Uh, there is some kind of potential for secrecy and uh, deception um, and for for there to be um, kind of one foot out and uh, one foot in with this two of wands. So let's explore. This is what they envision. They might not understand kind of like why that is or they might have uh, assumptions about why that is but let's get into some cards to reveal the ultimate impact that you'll have you have this blackberries agency and independence so uh again they they basically um recognize like you are going to be someone who is independent you are going to be your own person and they have to figure out themselves in being their own person um to some degree uh it may be that they don't know their own truth the, like uh, the integrity that uh, um they would want to hold themselves to might not be something that they have fully grasp quite yet you have par pair of shoes coupling and partnership so group number four you are going to really help your person see that you can be like a partner with someone and you also can be your own independent person at the same time that you don't have to give up uh your you know your thoughts, your beliefs, uh, your um, goals in order, you don't have to compromise who you are in order to be in relationship with someone. Um, and it's almost the differences in the own independent beliefs that make a, a stronger coupling. And we have this carry shell, passion feminine power i'm pretty sure that this has come up in like three of the other or like three of the readings so this sense of like 
almost I see it as with this Queen of Wands energy, like that your person is going to have to deal with the fact that you are a passionate person, that you are going to pursue your passions, and uh, they kind of need to not only be prepared for it, but figure out their own passions. Like they need to figure out what it means uh, to kind of be uh, one foot in and one foot out. Like what is it the one foot is the one foot is headed towards? Uh, and it's interesting you have I made that comment about the feet and you've got this pair of shoes. Like basically, I f I get the sense that uh, like they see this kind of concept of seven of swords like uh, needing to do things with uh, maybe secrecy or delicacy and not and kind of thinking they they need to uh, approach this future um, with a little bit uh, it's almost like conniving um, so that they can be like one step ahead but I, I feel like with you they're going to understand like this concept of partnership that they don't quite have a grasp on um we have this winter card here and it's making me think of these like these swords cards um and i get i get that being with you they're gonna kind of understand uh a little bit about how they kind of, I want to say, use their, the way they think about things is almost keeping it so they are kind of like trying to protect themselves, but in a way it makes them like, uh, it's almost distancing them from being vulnerable and, um, I guess I'm going to say it's, it's kind of it makes them seem a little like uh, cold and detached at, at times. But here I feel like you're going to help them kind of with this scarf, like um, things aren't as black and white. You're, you're going to help them th see things aren't black and white, that you're going to help them kind of recognize the flair within themselves a little bit and kind of um, get more into, uh, I guess, more into their, like their own person. And we have this baggage card. So I feel like you are kind of going to be reminding them of a lot of issues that they have. Uh, it may not be that you are going to be like pointing out their problems or their insecurities or telling them what to do. They may just be envisioning that that's going to happen, that they're going to have to like defend themselves and fight uh, like kind of, it's almost like imaginative arguments. Like they can almost see you kind of like, maybe nitpicking or something and them kind of envisioning what they would say to kind of put you in your place so that you didn't do it again. Um, I, I feel like you're going to really, I guess, be prepared for that. We have this create magic card. So like, you know, being with you, I feel like they're going to Kind of do a lot of self work, and with this create magic, they're going to be able to see that uh, there's some transformation that they need to make within themselves. Uh, this dragon is making me think of like a snake shedding their skin, but within that transformation, um, kind of see the magic within themselves that they have the ability to do, and maybe even use like their you know, uh, how they kind of think about things uh, to their advantage uh, when it comes to like career or, you know, hobbies, kind of like the, like using their uh, imagination uh, in a helpful way. 
So we have this armadillo self protection mode. So it does seem like with these uh, swords here, it does seem like your person is kind of protecting themselves. Uh, and I think with you, uh, this concept of like independence and partnership, uh, you're gonna really help them. Oh, and interesting, like the scales of the armadillo and the scales of the dragon. You're gonna help them to recognize that uh, boundaries are good to have, that uh, standards are good to have. And ultimately it seems like you have high standards, they're aware of it, but you're gonna help them recognize they should have high standards as well. That basically, like I said, boundaries uh, are good, uh, standards are good, and not just for the purpose of thinking someone is better than the other, um, but kind of being your own person, having your own voice, uh, having your own personal space, not allowing other people to kind of uh, belittle you or to kind of treat you in a certain way that you know you wouldn't want to, uh, you wouldn't treat others. So it's almost as if you're going to help them find a healthy balance of protecting themselves versus protecting themselves so much that it kind of like uh it's like a, a a battle like like who would want to get into that personal space if they know that uh they're going to be like you know fighting dirty to protect it it's like no go ahead and have your personal space um we have chameleon adaptability so I feel like with your person, um, them seeing seeing the future of like this eight of wands, like things are moving forward and almost them needing to protect themselves. Uh, they're going to also like, I feel like, again, you are going to help them to take, take the things that the tools they already have and just kind of use them in different ways. Again, that concept of it's, yeah, it's good to have standards. It's good to know what you'll accept and not accept, but also being, um, you know, recognize it's not all or nothing. It's not black or white. It's not, it's not happy or sad. There's a lot in the middle as well. And we have this butterfly transition into the soul. So I feel like you're really going to help, again, this concept of like this blue, like this concept of the swords, like this iciness, it's almost as if you're going to help them um, really start to become their own person and start to like enjoy things. Like uh, part of the reason why they're drawn to you is there is that sense of like passion and uh energy and life and like vibrancy that they are drawn to that they kind of uh you know uh, imagine for themselves want for themselves don't necessarily know how to get there themselves with this two of wands uh, but you're really going to help them to kind of transition into that better version of themselves. We have here the hero. So group number four, basically uh, being with you, they'll come to understand that uh, y they can let other people take the lead. They don't need to like... Um, they don't need to be the center of attention. They don't need to save the day. They can allow space for other people. And if they need help, they, you know, you'll help them to understand that sometimes you need help to kind of uh, conquer things. And I, I feel like the hero is the opposite of the Five of Swords. Uh, the Five of Swords is kind of like trying to be victorious and like at any cost. Uh, and here the hero is like uh, stepping up to take on something that might not even be their issue, but doing it to uh, kind of free someone from 
from something they can't avoid or to escape something um, that, you know, is pursuing them. But with the four, five of swords, it's like, you know, taunting and bring it on. So I feel like we, you are going to help them to kind of turn this around in a way where it's, uh, there's more honor in, in the decisions, uh, the positions, uh, the point of views that they're going to have going forward. You have this falling card. So being with you may bring up issues of like their past failures uh, and them like wanting to like, you know, make sure they win at all costs and they that no one really sees them doing something in a way that makes them look bad or like it's almost as if you're going to help them recognize that sometimes uh, just allowing things to go in a way where they don't have a safety net, where they don't come out on top is going to be the way that, you know, they kind of just surrender and accept certain things that will help them to kind of transition into a better version of themselves. And we have here the past. So I, I get a sense that um, their future with you, you re is really going to bring up aspects of their past. Um, and to some degree, kind of re reminding them that the past is some place to kind of uh, check in every once in a while as opposed to live in and you know kind of defending or living their life from a past position um is the better way to go uh but i feel like i feel like basically um the the these things that they're envisioning about the seven of swords the five of swords uh and even the two of wands um is bringing up aspects of the past that um, it may be that they don't necessarily know what direction to go in, but recognizing and accepting like who they are um, and what they truly want, as opposed to trying to uh, protect some aspect of the past or make it look better or to come out on top, that I, I feel like that's going to be key to, the, to how they move forward. So let's see what else we have for you, group number four. We have this trust card. So I feel like trust is going to be a big issue for your person and their future with you. Uh, and it's almost like you can't really force them to be honest uh, because if you kind of like forcing someone to tell you everything or show you everything or reveal everything is going to make them want to hide even more. So I feel like it's almost you just being you, being, you know, your independent self, your vibrant self, being passionate and living your life. It's almost like you are kind of uh, showing by demonstration how you can be your own person and, you know, reveal what you want to reveal and, uh, and kind of, I would say it's, you're going to teach them that sometimes you can't know everything and you have to, you have to trust your intuition to kind of make certain decisions. And by you doing that with them, um, is going to kind of teach them. It's going to teach them how to kind of trust themselves a bit more, um, and to kind of trust being more vulnerable um, and kind of like let their guard down a bit. We have this relaxation. So group number four, basically it's almost like your your person is, feels like they need to be prepared and ready for, to defend themselves, ready to take action. Um, but it seems like uh you are going to like allow them to like that concept of being vulnerable just like and f acceptance and surrender and falling um just allowing them to like yeah have your healthy boundaries know what you need to do but 
just release, just like kind of uh, lounge. Don't be prepared to defend or attack. And you have this card of purity. So, and again, there's this concept of snow and this concept of winter, but I feel like here there's more there's more life coming in. It's like allowing um, aspects of the past to kind of have snow, like fall, like fall on top of aspects of the past and kind of give a fresh new start or an appearance of a fresh new start. Uh, and so here you might not only be helping them to internalize this transition into the soul, but giving themselves a, 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 a new way to kind of look at the situation, at, even from an appearance point of view, and see things kind of differently. And almost, you know, that concept of vulnerability, kind of um, helping them find that place so that they can, you know, figure out the need, you know, why, why there's this need for so much, like, you know, winning at all costs and protection. So we have retrograde review. So group number four, definitely helping them uh, reflect on the past. Again, that's not necessarily a place to live and it's not there to kind of for blaming or for nitpicking. It's more just for reflection. Um, and I feel like you're gonna help them figure that out. We have this Venus and be loved card. So group number four, I feel like, um, you are going to really influence uh, your person by showing kind of like how to love and uh, even self-love. Again, that concept of like um, having standards, having respect for yourself, uh, you know, allowing yourself to pursue your life's passions. Um, it's really going to show your person like the tenderness that maybe they don't quite have a grasp on in their life. And here we have this Scorpio investigate card. So I feel like being with you, not only bringing issues up from their past and reflecting on it, um, they're going to start asking their own questions. I feel like with the five of swords and the seven of swords, it's almost like uh, your person thinks they know better or thinks that there's nothing left for them to need to know or that they need to protect the knowledge they have. But I feel like with you, they are going to be more open to questioning what they don't know the possibilities the mysteries of things and not necessarily have a end game in mind or like a purpose other than discovery of themselves other than like learning more about who they are and figuring out that sense of independence and having responsibility over their life and their decisions. Again, this trust card comes out. So trust, communication, um, vulnerabilities, that's really key for your person and your how you impact their life. We have this freedom card here. So I get that this like this eight of wands, this kind of movement, uh, it is a sense of freedom. This two of wands, is kind of like a sense of planning and maybe a little bit, not resistance to freedom, but afraid of what freedom might be like. Uh, so I feel like there are gonna be issues, again, of independence versus uh, being a couple in partnership that you're going to, uh, really really bring to the surface for your person and almost uh showing showing your person that like uh this idea of 
like being single as freedom versus being in a relationship and not having freedom. That's not really what what the idea should be. Uh, freedom should be existing when you're in a relationship, even more so. Freedom to kind of be who you are, to have the passions like that you have, and to kind of uh, share those with the person that you're in a relationship with. Um, the freedom to kind of speak your mind and the freedom to know that like um, the person that you're with trust that what the decisions that you're making you're making with the other person in mind and their best interest as well and not some like selfish i just want you know everything for me um concept i feel like uh you have a real big impact on how they see this concept of of freedom and independence and um, like passion to do what they want to do in life but still be in a relationship. And we have this card of beauty. So group number four, to some degree, uh, I get that your person really sees you as someone who is attractive drawn to your inner beauty your outer beauty i feel like you are going to help your person uh see that within themselves as well and to not feel like they have to run away from it or that they have to protect it at all costs but that it's something to uh help them kind of deal with aspects of their past and uh, understand why it is that they may have created these like um, this need for protection and this kind of all or nothing black or white viewpoint in the first place. So group number four, I hope this provides a helpful perspective of how your person envisions their future with you and how you will affect that future. We'll see you next time. Take care.